Welcome to the Aftermarket Report, Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim, supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. I love stocks. Today we're going to talk about OPGN, MA, Lake, APT, CODX, and DYAI. Good morning, Miss Vegas. Hi, good morning, Jim, and uh, good morning to everybody. Hope you're having a good weekend and just to do a video for you guys to prepare you for this coming week and, you know, really to prepare you for tomorrow and uh, we'll have to assess, you know, day to day. But, you know, as you guys know, the coronavirus stock is still on the news constantly, uh, seeing that American Airlines has suspended flights to Milan. Uh, Australia had reported their first deaths in the coronavirus in West Australia. South Korea has reported about uh, the total cases of corona, about 3,526. So it's still a talk in the industry, um, obviously on the news. So can companies still be affected? And can these corona stocks still be something that are going to be moving? And so that's why we have quite a few Corona stocks to still monitor and watch and potentially trade because it seems like those stocks will have some activity. So let's start with uh, OPGN. Uh, you know, OPGN wanted to talk about because, you know, this company's into the antibiotic resistance. They, uh, you know, work with the Center of Disease Control. Um, but they are developing more than 250,000 antibiotics. Um, that is just amazing that they're working on that many. That is just crazy. Um, so they are um, a chart that, you know, this is actually a stock you want to look at to trade. Uh, the weekly looks really good and looking for a continuation on the stock. Um, so this could be something you want to keep on your watch list and maybe look to do a swing trade. I kind of like it for a swing trade, unless, of course, it moves really nicely during the day. You may want to just make it a day trade. Uh, but the reason it's had a lot of movement as well is that this actual company uh, did give an update not that long ago on February 20th on the Caritas preliminary um financials and business update and they also had the revenues increasing by 64 percent which is up from 1.4 million from 2018. so definitely this is one to watch if you guys remember earlier in the month in february they did have a 50 million uh, atm offering so keep that in mind uh but still the revenues are there so Jim, uh, let's hear about this chart and maybe something people may want to keep watching for a continuation and uh, or maybe just day trade. So let's hear about your thoughts on OPGN chart. Yeah, I think it's it might be running in a little bit of financial insecurity right now, but I really like the yearly chart on it. We did have a 2960 high and it has sold off pretty much in the last five months and then here just we had a resistance level that we needed to break on this yearly and that was at right around the 20 i'm saying around 220 area let me magnify this up and see yeah right around 227 so i'm definitely going to put that little trend line in there let's pull up the daily i've kind of got well let's pull up the 20 day we did have a nice breakout run on this on thursday it did pull back about 50 percent retracement to the previous highs we had right here at 227 245 and she bounced up friday and then kind of just held its support with with it kind of bouncing buck back into close at five o'clock i mean after friday so we got a resistance to break and that's going to be this 350 to 361 area that's going to be the resistance to break more like 350 Pullback support should be right around the 304, maybe the 309 area. So I'm going to put that in there too for a, for your first support. Second one, the 269, and then you got your 227. It can also stop right here at around 244, so keep that in mind. Those are your four supports. Strong buy again. It's going to be down here if it breaks below $2. Resistance to breaks, 350, and that's OPGN. And the next one we're going to talk about is ma mastercard yeah so you know mastercard obviously you know they did uh mention last uh over a week ago that they did say you know their um forecast for the quarterly revenue 
because of the coronavirus, they they're kind of saying that the revenue might be a little bit you know less than what they normally anticipate because you know people are obviously not able to travel, so it is taking a little bite out of their you know let's say business executive travel and also um, some e-coms. So you know they're kind of saying they might have a little bit less revenue. However, um, you know there doesn't mean that people are still not you know buying things um with their credit cards uh but the definitely you know one to watch mastercard because uh this could be also an opportunity to actually trade this this one here uh not just from a stock perspective but even from an option perspective i mean i kind of like the way mastercard has been trading um if we actually look at the actual mastercard let me just pull it up here the stock did close around 290.25 and uh, if you were to actually look at the actual options perspective on MasterCard you will see that funny enough I mean this is a real crazy strike but if you were to look at um, I'm seeing a lot of volume in the 350 strike those are going for six dollars each um, and that's for the weekly if you go to the ones for March 13, um, there is a lot of volume again on the 367.50 strike. Those are going for about $57 a contract. So that kind of is a little bit more appealing. I kind of like those ones, the March 13, 367.50s, because I am looking to see uh, MasterCard start to reverse. Um, you may actually even like the March 20 strikes. Uh, there's a lot of volume in the ones that have the 340 strike and the ones for 350 strike are very attractive. I mean, those ones are going for $43. So, you know, pick the right expiry. I would suggest if you're going to consider trading some of these stocks, the, um, the, like this one in particular, MasterCard, better to go further with a further expiry date. You might be paying a little more in premium um, but it's not that much. I mean, forty-three dollars for a three-fifty contract for March twenty gives you a good three weeks, uh, and you could take a starter if you're interested in trading it. And then you could see if it's going the right direction. Then you may want to add more options to the trade, you know. But you may just take a starter, maybe get a couple, and then this way it's on your dashboard and you can monitor how the trade's going, and then um, go from there. And you can decide to add or uh, not add. So keep a watch on MasterCard. I think it's definitely going to have a reversal, in my opinion. Um, so, Jim, what are your thoughts on MasterCard? A lot of good stocks took a killer beating last week, and MasterCard was one of them. It had a 347.25 high, and then the last five days it pulled back to a low of right around 273. So that's a $70 dip, $74 dip on this stock alone in five days. So we're kind of, we went past the 200 EMA right here, as you see on the yearly. And I have a low support there at 281.28. And you can see we topped out there many times. Had one little head and shoulders right here, but then she had that last. I mean, we've had an enormous run here in the last three to four months. And we always keep it in the back of our neck about the coronavirus. You know, this is, a, I'll put this in the uh, comments below this website but this is John Hopkins CSSE with says here that we had 86,992 confirmed with a death toll of 2,979 and total recovery rate of 42,618 but this I look at this every morning see if we kind of have our level on the out any or but it's something that you might want to keep always put that in the back of your head that's what I've been telling the room so we're going to look at the chart again as I said we pulled back to that 200 and she went ahead and bounced above it Friday and then a lot of stocks I think hit that 200 and bounced up and just kind of rebounded so we got we're going to pull up the 20 day just have a look at the 20 day you see the sharp sell off we've had here from 347.25 to 370.12 and then we created a couple supports we did have a nice rebound on it Friday and we got a break of resistance of 295.24. If we can break that resistance, we'll go up to the next 
plateau and that could be right around above 300 307 and actually it could stop in between anywhere anytime in there here's another one right here at 382 low support right around 270 with that strong buy I think it's going to be right around 281 if it does pull back with a resistance to break at 295.24 and try to bring it back up to this 200 on the daily uh, or on the 20 day one hour chart and I'm just going to look at one more thing here just to kind of get a glimpse how Friday went I mean it, Friday was a good day to be trading the rebound I got my mind took off the I got in Tesla and I took a pretty good loss on it Friday because I wasn't paying attention and uh, so it reversed on me went up so I'm kind of thinking we might have hit some bottoms on some of these trades it all depends on how this week turns out or what we hear in the news if there's any more cases or not but that's MA low support down here at 281 resistance to break at 295.24 and you're willing to stop these, this video at any time and write these numbers down. Just remember, they come from I Love Stocks. The next one we're going to talk about, there's going to be a couple. The rest of them are going to be uh, coronavirus stocks. And we're going to start off with Lake, Miss yeah. Vegas. So Lakeland, I mean, we've talked about Lakeland before. You know, they have a lot of the disposable protection. So if you go to their website, lakeland.com, if you want to research it, by the way, Canadian company, and uh, you could actually see the stuff that they make, but everything they make is disposable, and they have, like, the full body suits with the headgear. They make the shoe covers. They do the actual uh, lab coats. They do all kinds of products. Obviously, they have the mask. Uh, they have these, like, amazing, like, boots that you can uh, put on on top of your uh, actual wear uh, and they come in different colors I mean not that anybody would care what color they're wearing just everyone wants to be safe um, with their protective gear uh, but certainly Lake is one of those stocks that you definitely want to watch because when there is a lot of hype with these Corona stocks I will say to you in my opinion and from everything I've seen Lake and APT are the top two most volatile stocks out of all the corona plays that are out there and uh lake had a beautiful close it had a 52 week closing high beautiful volume surging on it obviously and uh, it's got a nice pocket pivot so you know because these corona companies and coronavirus i'm calling these corona companies but you know because this corona virus is still constantly being talked about nonstop. again have these this one in particular on your watch list and you can anticipate you know i wouldn't be surprised there could even be a volume pop uh a morning gap tomorrow morning on lake because they're still talking about corona or maybe sometimes there'll be a pullback on it and then their opportunity to consider uh, a dip buy so it depends your strategy but uh you know i usually like to wait till the open to buy and then reassess the trade at that point when the market's open. Um, but beautiful chart. And so Jim, let's hear about this lovely chart. Yeah, I'm looking at the yearly chart right now. You can see we had a yearly low of 970. We bounced down there a few times. And then we had the last month from January the 17th. We've had to run on this about the time that that came out in the news. So we've had to, Last week was another big gap on it. Kind of concerns me a little bit because of how it acted pre-market and it sold off all day. So I'm going to draw these little trend lines in here. I'm going to pull up 20 day and have a look at it. I think I can change this. Remove drawing. I get right to the penny. You know, I put my trend lines on the base of the candlesticks because that's where most of the strength is. So we're going to go to the uh, 20 day now, one hour. We had a great run it all, on it all last week. It ran from this bottom right here, right around 1220, all the way to 40 bucks, 39 something. So put another trend line right here. We did have a big pre market after, well, pre market run where it ran all the way from 23 all the way up to 39. I mean, it's huge. It's huge. $16 gain. 
and then she sold off all day during and then we kind of closed down here with support level so I'm thinking maybe your low support is going to be right here at 1716 let me go ahead and draw that in with a red line that's going to be your low support it could probably go a little higher than that right around the 1744 1755 area so let's pull this up on the three minute daily yeah I'm going to be watching this real close if the momentum starts to pick up we did descend all day Friday but it had too big of a breakout like a lot of these stocks have and I don't think this has stopped yet I think there's a lot more information out there that we're not receiving with the coronavirus and I do believe that this can run back up to resistance again and that's going to, to me is going to be in this area right in here this little channel between let me type let me see here 25 70 to 2858 then you have a little pivot point in between there right at 27.22 with low support down here at $17 you got 18.42 area somewhere in here for your second your first one's going to be at 19.94 with a resistance to break is going to be this 22.45 and 23.08 area now that you're going to get real volatile with this trade so if it knives on your Monday morning wait for confirmation for maybe a retracement bounce to to these old resistance lines here we got to break that resistance right there at 2245 if we can do that we'll go up to this new channel up here between 2570 and 2858 but definitely keep lake on watch I don't want to see it go no lower than 1703 or 1724 somewhere in that area and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be APT Yes, and APT is Alpha Protec. You know, this is another one that makes the, you know, the um, protective apparel. They make the masks. They make the full bot. You know, full, full gear. It's very exactly similar company to Lake, and obviously all their products are made in the U.S. And I love that. And um, you know, I really, you know, this was an amazing trade. I mean, last week. Um, you know, we alerted this trade during the day in the chat room at the 647 range. And um, I can't believe it. I mean, the stock went all the way up to $41.59. Uh, it's just incredible on Friday. So can you imagine you just had this as a swing trade? I mean, some people are very nervous. They don't want to swing trade because they're afraid that they could pull back. And, and then they could lose their gains and some people that's why they just want to day trade and that's fine I mean you have to do what's what's your what's good for you and what you're comfortable with because it is your money um, but imagine that you had a swing position even a small size to go from even let's say seven dollars all the way up to 41 it's just an incredible incredible move I mean it's just uh, phenomenal um, certainly didn't anticipate that kind of move, but wow. Uh, I mean, when it definitely hit that $10, I mean, that $10 was really important on uh, February 25th. And that's the high of day that we had. That was the, you know, we had the high of day of 1080, but we hit that $10. And as soon as you hit that $10, you know, it attracts a totally different level of traders. And boy, they were in this. And uh, wow, $41.59 was just incredible. So keep this one still on watch because as you can see, it although it went as high as 41.59, you gotta take your profits and not keep thinking, I'm gonna swing, I'm gonna hold, and don't put stop losses uh, during the day because look where it went. It closed at $21. So you have to sell your, your position, you have to scale out. And you know that's a nice close, $21. So let's see tomorrow what where this can open at and um, where we're going to go with with uh, APT because again this is my second favorite one together with like the my top two for corona clays uh, again most volatile out of all of them out there so uh, what are your thoughts Jim on uh, APT well we had a huge gap up on it Thursday and Friday we also had one all week long it had a yearly low of 320 with a 
high on big breakout on Friday at 41.59 with the low support right around here right around 16.38 is where I'm going to put that trend line there so that's on the yearly chart now you know these are all speculative trades right now because of the coronavirus it's, it and you have to just kind of run with the momentum if it pulls back you know the volume could pick up and and retrace back up but right now you know it's we have a cause and that's the coronavirus for these stocks to be running it's had a huge breakout i mean just looking at the 20 day last week i mean we were on this we did video on this last sunday both of these ran up tremendously they, i mean just from uh from the low support down here at 560 APT ran all the way up to 49 bucks in five days so we did have a 50 percent retracement and that's right here we I mean you got 49 and we did close at 21 dollars so that's almost a 50 cent more than a 50 percent retracement and same thing happened it had the big run after hours big run pre-market and then just sold off all day with a descending pattern so we might have hit a support here and it might retrace back up it depends on what we hear in the news you had an ascending triangle right here let me point this out where we had another breakout right in this area right here so that's going to be your low support it's going to be that 1350 you have to kind of you know look at it a little bit deeper if case it does knife this 1352 could be a solid solid support that's where that ascending triangle breakout happened and then we had the big gap up pre-market you know this thing likes to run up pre-market and pull back run up after hours pre-market had a huge pullback so low support 1352 the second channel of support is going to be the 1638 to 1763 and then if we can break out of this first support of 2009 to 2104 if we can break that 2104 and go up we'll have a next channel of resistance at 2447 to 2523 hard to say it can get back to 30 but who knows i mean the momentum really took took off on these stocks Friday last week, and we called them out. Let me see this support level right here. We've got a resistance right there, right around the 3044 area. So low support. I don't want to see it no lower than 1352, with another breakout here. Second support at 1638 to 1761, with that first channel of resistance to break at 2104. And you'll get up to these newer highs, these new channels up here. And that's APT. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be CODX. Oh, yes. Love CODX. And this is code X, you know, for co-diagnostics. That's what it stands for. Um, and they obviously do a lot of diagnostic laboratory testing. And they have a lot of technology, too. Uh, they do, they're very into molecular diagnostics. Uh, so definitely keep watching on that. They did have an offering, just so you know, um, at $9 a share on CODX. However, uh, so even though they had that offering, um, you know, the stock still did well, closed at 1323 So the market's still liking this actual company and, and the actual stock. So definitely, um, you have to remember, they had some news also last week, aside from this offering, they had um, the, the uh, CE mark for the Novell coronavirus test. So the market really liked that a lot. So um, definitely keep this one on your watch list. And this could uh, have a continuation if these corona stocks are active tomorrow. So, Jim, let's hear about Codex because it had a really nice uh, move. Yep. And still the chart looks really good here. So could be something to still see um, potential volume and still be in play. Yep. Um, lab test kits, 75,000 diagnos diagnostic kits available for testing the coronavirus. I don't know if that has to do with That was a the health secretary's are says that in a way they got 75,000 you know going to need a lot more than that probably anybody with a common code is going to go to the hospital and get tested because a bunch of the it's just what you got to do you got to test if you think you're unusually sick for some reason 
So let's look at the yearly chart, CODX. Yearly chart with a year low at 69 cents. It kind of less flat most of the year until this breakout happened. And we had a resistance right here to break at 439. Another one here at 890, 886. And another one right here at 1320. Draw these lines in here so I can. We'll pull up the 20 day. 20 day will tell us a different story, probably. Pretty much right on spot. Resistance up here, right there at 2021. Another one right here at 2327 with a long of 2485 with a pre market high yesterday, Friday at 26. We did pull back. Another 50% retracement, which was healthy, which is healthy. We have a support level here at 1134. I'd like to see that hold. If not, it can travel in this area right down in here. I'm thinking maybe right around 986, just under 10. So you got three supports. You got 886, 986, and 1134 with resistances to break. And I think it needs to be probably this. 1341 area 1320 somewhere in here if we can break that we'll get back up here to these new resistance levels at 1592 to 1657 but it did have a retracement and it can pull back here you know it can knife because of just how much it's ran in the past three three days i mean look at that all the way from 426 all the way to 26 bucks 22 dollar bounce with a 50 percent retracement so low support 886 if it knives i like to see it hold 1134 break resistance of 1341 with a long target in this channeled area right in here starting at 1592 all the way up to right around the 1958 area and that's codx and the last one we're going to talk about is dyai Yes, and so DYAI is called Dyadic Industries, and, uh, you know, this company is located in Jupiter, Florida, and um, they are a global biotech company, and um, they also have a little subsidiary, though, also in the Netherlands, and they're known to produce commercial quantities of enzymes and other proteins that are required for the production of industrial enzymes. And they've actually licensed this technology to third parties. Um, so that's interesting. But the reason I mentioned this actual company is that they were mentioned on Fox Business News uh, yesterday that this company is looking to be the one that looks to mass produce the Corona virus. And uh, there was um, some comments here from the CEO, Mark Amelfarb, and he was talking about how his company could expedite the production of an actual affordable coronavirus vaccine. So um, he says that the, with his company's technology, and I'm quoting what he said, um, that they can allow them to mass produce a vaccine should one get approved in the next several months so like i mentioned they've developed the technology platform that by the way they've been developing for many years and uh they, to make proteins at a very large scale but also at a very low cost so uh he was uh, actually interviewed and he was on uh fox business news so i can put this link because there's actual video attached it's about three and a half minutes so I'm going to include this video link uh, from Fox Business News in our YouTube. Uh, if, you go, if you scroll down below the YouTube, where we have all the information for our chat room links. Um, I'll include the link for you guys to watch this video in case it's of interest to you. But I would definitely be adding this stock to your watch list, DYAI, uh, because it's definitely one to uh, watch as part of the Corona place. So uh, definitely we'll have to see how this works uh, and how this behaves tomorrow. But uh, very interesting uh, company. And Jim, your thoughts on the chart? 
Yeah, I was just sitting here looking at it. it. looked like it's had a pretty healthy year most of the year. We did have a 270 low when she ran to 730, and she's kind of hopped around in this little channel from the 502 area all the way up to the 701, and we did hit that Friday. It only had a two-day breakout last week, so this might be late to the run because it, it was up here at 701 back on, uh, or 730 back on 618 had solid support at 502 so that's going to be your low 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 support let's pull up the 20 day got one more trend line right here at 517 so maybe at 517 is going to be your your third support your second one at 538 and your first one right down here at 560 looks to me like it wants to break out up higher on that pullback that it did have so long resistance is going to be right there at 619. If we can break that 619, we'll go see 632 for sure. Low support, 517. Pivot point right here at 592. And their first resistance at 619, 632, and 651. And if she decides to really take off, maybe back up to the double top of 701 to 709. And that's DYAI. And that's it for the market report. Always remember, let me pull up the website here. Hit that little Twitter bird right there. We've got a little link that brings us to our Twitter site. We're at 1151. We gained a little bit over 20, maybe 30 followers last week. So we keep adding on. We've been adding on a lot here lately. And one reason for that, Miss Vegas has been posting alerts in here that of stocks that we've been watching. NVDA was a good one last week. You see right there, she just, you know, we post alerts in here. We also have on our site, if you want to go to our site, we have our little links to our stock twits, Vegas's and mine, Pinterest and our YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring that bell. If you ever wanted to buy any merchandise, it takes about a week or two to get to you, but I bought me one of these stock chicks coffee cups and Bought me an apron because I own a small janitorial business and bought me this little hoodie right here. But always remember when you're checking them out, check the colors and make sure that they show up. It doesn't show up good on that one, so you might want to get a different color. I made the fatal mistake and bought that blue, and you can barely see my logos on it. But that's that. Miss Vegas, you have anything else you'd like to say? No, I mean, I think, uh, again, the Corona stock's still on watch. Um you know, there's uh, still, like I said, talk on the news and uh, be interesting to see how the markets react tomorrow. I mean, we did have a very rough week last week, but a very strong close at the end of the day Friday. So going to see, you know, how is the market going to behave tomorrow and uh, be interesting to see what the spy does and uh, didn't really comment too much on the spy today because it had a good close, but I just want to see if it's going to hold uh at tomorrow at the open so uh very interested to see i guess people will be watching futures markets later this evening to see kind of helps them give a clue to what to anticipate the next day and uh you know anything can happen so we'll wait and see uh can't make all these predictions because you know what at the end of the day um it, what matters is what's in front of you so follow the tape follow the charts and uh, if you're not going to buy calls, obviously you're going to buy puts. If you're not going to go long, you're going to go short. You're just going to trade the channels. And that's the only way that you're going to make money is to trade the direction of where the market's taken it. doesn't matter it, what you think. It matters what is the direction of the trade and just trade that. And you'll obviously do well. So uh, congratulations to everyone that had a great week. Last week, a lot of people bought a lot of puts or went long on the Corona stocks. So people um, made good money last week. So congratulations to them. And uh, let's have another good week and uh, wish everyone a great green day on Monday. So have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, we love stocks. This is the Aftermarket Report, Sunday's edition, March 1st, 2020. We love stocks. Have a great day. Thank you.